Thank you very much. Mr. President, Madam President, Madam Foreign Minister and Ambassador and distinguished guest. We have the best president in the world. until he does something we don't like, <laughs> or until we have a problem that he has, does not solve. Now, I'm not talking about the president of Rwanda. I'm talking about the president of the United States. <laughs> because right now, you would have to say he is one of the most disliked presidents we've ever had, except the ones we didn't like when they were president, all the way back to Thomas Jefferson. People found fault with the Declaration of Independence, rightly so. It did not free slaves. But he didn't let that keep him from loving a black woman. He did not let that keep him from growing our country. Now, the president before him, John Adams, was one of our weak presidents, too. And the president after him got us into a war. What I'm saying is that the most difficult job in the world is to be the leader of a free people, because they take credit for all of the good and blame it on God's blessing and their ancestors. And everything's wrong with the world, they blame on the president, <laughs> including the problems of our policemen, the problems of our children, the problems of our you know, and, and it's an impossible job. And so we must thank God for anyone that is thrust into a position of leadership, even in a country that is as rich as this. And we always find time to complain. But as you say, Agashira, it's our choice. <laughs> Whenever I really get honest, and instead of finding fault with what my president is doing, I put myself in the position to say, well, what would I have done? And I have to admit, I don't know. Looking at the presidency of Franklin Roosevelt, who now, 60 years later, we think one of the greatest men that ever lived, Teddy Roosevelt and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in their lifetime, they were amongst the most hated men of our country. And so I want you to say to yourselves and to your ancestors, our ancestors, that we really and truly appreciate the leadership with which we have been blessed. And now I'm talking about President Paul Kagame. But I can say the same thing about President Barack Hussein Obama. I don't know what would have happened if the other guy had won. <laughs> and I'm really scared to think of what's going to happen next when his term runs out. It is really and truly an almost impossible job to please a democracy. 
But the fact that you can make a choice and the fact that you can complain is only the beginning of the responsibility of a democratic society. For a democratic society doesn't depend on what the leadership does. A democratic society depends on the spirit, the integrity, the energy, and the vision, the devotion, the loyalty, the action of the people. And so whatever you find wrong with anything in the world, the best place to find an answer is looking in the mirror and then getting down on your knees and thanking God that it's no worse. But don't forget to look in the mirror and remember all the things that you have not done It's not perfect world, but it's the best world I could ever dream of. And when I visit Rwanda, it's one of the few countries in the world beside this one. And I have a hard time living in this one. But it's one of the few countries in the world where I think I could live happily, invest, raise and educate children. and enjoy peace and prosperity in my old age. The only problem is that um, our president has said that we are in the Moses generation. And Moses didn't start his work until he was 80. And I'm 82, so I'm just getting started. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President, for all that you have done, for the vision and leadership that you have shared, but most of all, for peace on earth in Rwanda and the ability to really and truly follow what Jesus said, bless those that persecute you and pray for those that despitefully use you and love your enemies even as much if not more than you love yourself. <laughs>